Africans, like many countries, are sports obsessed. So it's no surprise that when you talk about rugby, when you talk about cricket and soccer, those are our national sports that we really obsess about. Uh, they get no bigger in the rugby circles and scenes than the clash between North and South, the Bulls versus Stormers. It is an epic encounter, a major battle. Uh, and this past weekend saw that battle taking place at DHL Stadium. Uh, and guess who was man of the match? Wink, wink, nudge, <laughs> nudge. The man right next to me, Hajiba Diamani. Uh, it's, you, what an incredible game, first of all. Lekker to be chatting with you today. Uh, and I seem to be a good luck charm to you because the, every time we've chatted in the past three weeks, this guy's gone on to not only score tries, but just have good performances. Yeah. No, thank you very much, obviously, for having me. I'm very obviously excited. <laughs> We need to talk um, about this. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a tough game. It was a test match rugby and something that, yeah, my body was so sore. Only recovered today. I was going to say, how's oh, the legs feeling? That little sidestep. I'm like, what? Where did I, that, huh? Yo, I struggled waking up. <laughs> but today, obviously, when I was like, listen, I'm driving a Maserati. Exactly. Woke up, showered, like, and I kept on running here. Damn, I want to talk about your life. I want to talk about, I know you were in, in JP at school. Uh, talk about your transition from the Lions yeah. to the Stormers. But importantly, like you said, we need to get yeah. behind the wheel of this Maserati. Yeah. Uh, again, huge thanks to our friend at Millstock. Uh, they've supplied us with, with this vehicle. This is a beast. Do you know that underneath here, it says Maserati, but there's a Ferrari engine that lurks underneath here. And the question is, can this gentleman over here, who could sidestep some of the best players in the world to go on and score a try under the poles, be equally at home behind the wheel of a Maserati? Let's find out. First of all, let me tell you, this car suits you. Yeah. Brother, this yeah. is... This, this car is so proper. I'm even like tempted to take off my my shoes <laughs> and drive barefoot. Yeah, the Yeezy <laughs> so I can feel it. <laughs> um, tell me about rugby. Growing up in, obviously, in Gauteng and uh, attending JP, yeah. was rugby something you always were passionate about from a, from a young age? Ah, uh, no. So, I actually grew up in Cape Town. I was really? born in Cape Town, yeah. Are you a Cape Townian through yeah, and through? Yeah, I was so born in Cape Town. So, how did you end up in JP? Yeah, I'll tell you the story. It's actually... Uh, it's a, actually very interesting. So I actually was born in Joslovo. Okay. Uh, Mongleton. Yes. And then from there I went to school in um, Aesterplatt. No ways. Yeah, I went to Aesterplatt. Then from Aesterplatt I moved to um, Craddock. Craddock okay. in the Eastern Cape. Craddock in the Eastern Cape is a yeah. long way off uh, from, from Cape Town. I'm telling you. And then obviously um, from there I made my I saw myself going to Joburg, yeah, because my granny obviously sent okay. me to to um, to Joburg. You know your 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 fellow colleagues and Stormers players are watching you leave, and they're going, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> I obviously used to do athletics. Okay. And um, after, a sprinter. Yeah, I was a sprinter, and when I was doing athletics, um, it became a thing where. Um, obviously, schools started noticing you and all the stuff. Yeah. And I got a scholarship to go to JP. Oh. Um, from because I was playing in an invitational and obviously I wasn't as great but I was obviously had some potential and I got a scholarship and then from obviously from there it wasn't uh, it wasn't as easy as as everyone makes it feel like yeah, people yeah. think I just came out of school no. and straight into rugby. No. It's a hard so obviously um, I was in uh, matric yes um, at JP and and when I was there and obviously played rugby and the Lions came up to me like listen we want you to come and join us yeah. and I was like okay cool and then became a thing of 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 me obviously proving myself playing day in day out beating schools like kids all our sister schools <laughs> and that's, then, i mean you, you just say just like i think that's <laughs> the biggest rivalry yeah, school actually, rivalry yeah, it is. and then obviously from there we just moved to I, I just went to the lions and i got a contract under 19 and then from there i just never looked back and then coming back home because yeah. the lions obviously didn't want to see you leave, but yeah. you thought, listen, I, mean, I want to move back home, move, move yeah. down to the coast. Was it a big move for you? Was it a big decision to make? Yeah, no, definitely. For me, it was it was very tough because obviously I, uh, last time I was in Cape Town, I was very, very young. Yeah. And the, the part of Cape Town that I know is totally different to, Got you. to the Cape Town I'm living in now. Because okay. I obviously was from Joe Slovo and it was like, you know, it wasn't the greatest. You see double, double story shacks, triple story yeah. shacks and all yeah. sorts of things. Then when I came here, I don't want to come here, the crime's very high, everything, you know. And eventually when I came here, obviously, and I actually started loving it. So I saw Cam's Bear, so Clifton. Yeah. 
yeah. And it's weird. Places that you'd never seen yeah, before due I to where you were where you were brought up. Yes, I never thought those places exist. You know, town was a place where you actually go and catch a taxi and just leave. You drive past town. You never stayed in town. So now when I was staying in town, I was like, what? Town is actually so cool. It's like it's like you're in the UK. It's yeah. so safe. Yeah. And then I was like, this place is actually the place. And then obviously when you're happy, um, off the field, you should be happy on the field. Yes. And, uh, yeah. and that's what's happening. You, I mean, yeah. you can see you're the rugby you're playing at the moment. And I know we've had the, the privilege of chatting yeah. uh, consistently at uh, the build-up to almost every game you've yeah. played. And you've just been playing. And you know what the thing is, is that you, you make, I know it's a lot of hard work, yeah. but you, we, because you're enjoying the game so much and you, you're playing your socks off, you, you are playing such good rugby. You, so, sir, are playing the best. I, I, I was so like on the weekend I was watching and I, I wasn't at the game. I was far, far away from yeah. you, uh, from Cape Town Stadium, DHL Cape Town Stadium. And I was like, yes, I screamed my head off of that sidestep and that try against the Bulls. Um, <laughs> they, I mean, talk to us through about the, the physicality of a game like against the Bulls. I mean, you, uh, it's probably, there's no tougher encounter in terms of domestic rugby. There's those type of games where you just wake up in the morning, you're just like, yo. Yo, I should have. What been happened? A, I should have been a lawyer. Or I should yeah. have been a model. <laughs> I was hit by a train <laughs> yeah. yesterday, and it, it's a tough game, and it's, it's nice to have because it obviously keeps South African rugby um, alive, and obviously keeps everything going yeah. in the country, and 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 the youngsters love it. You know, absolutely. You're an inspiration to another generation of future professional yeah. rugby players. Away from the game, what are your passions? Do you love music, cooking, food? What are the kind of cars? What, yeah. what kind of what kind of the things that so you're into I, outside I'm, of rugby? I'm into like um, fashion. Okay. Yeah. So like I I, I sell sneakers, sell shoes. Yeah. I have what my own brand. a great. Yeah, I know. So I Yo. sell sneakers and I'm a hustler. I call myself a hustlepreneur because I just hustle and uh, yeah, I love I love. Um, I'm obviously back at school. I'm yeah. doing some. I'm trying to study, um, and yeah, that's what that's what I'm doing. But I love cars. Yes. Just because I can't afford it doesn't mean I. It's I, coming. I, I, yeah, it's coming. Yeah, yeah. I see a fleet of cars in the future. Um, yeah. What do you think of this car? We, we're actually just ambling around around um, um, your, your high performance center yeah. out in the north. But I mean, you can feel. And what I like about it is you show at home behind a performance car like this Maserati. There's a Ferrari 4.7 liter engine in. In actual fact, they've taken the 4.3 liter and they've bought it out to 4.7 liters of sheer Italian power. Uh, and and the nice thing, like I said about this Maserati, is it looks really good on your heart. How are you feeling about this car? How are you let me let me let me tell you something. My foot is shaking. Sing this. I'm so used to a Toyota. So when I'm just pulling my foot down, it's like there's so much power. So I'm just touching it and it's just doing this. Shaking. It's just shaking. And I'm just like, you know what, there's so much power in this car. And like it's 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 magnificent, you know, and, and this type of cars. I actually now when I because every time I was walking, like when I walk in Clifton, Camps Bay, and I look at the people driving, I'm always like to myself, like I wonder how this car feels like. Now I actually know. Know what a Maserati feels like. You know, it's it's just one of those things where I'm just excited to actually be in the, be in this car. And the weird thing about this car is it doesn't really. It, it, I mean, it's not a new car. It's, yeah. not, it's not a new car. It's been around. This is on the showroom floor at Millstock. But yet, it still feels like a like a modern day car. No, no, definitely. And and it's it's those type of cars where. You know, you're, what the petrol price going up, you know. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> it's a weekend driver. It's a weekend, it's a weekend driver. driver. Because as I'm, as I'm pressing the pedal, you can just feel that no, the half the tank is gone. <laughs> you know, so I'm just obviously, I feel like for you to own this type of car, you need to obviously know your story. Exactly. Let's talk about the future. You've got yeah. a small bit of a break at the moment. Yeah. When I say break, folks, you and I uh, uh, would encounter the Bulls and then spend the rest of our lives trying to recover. They get like a, a day being the Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, they're back together as a group. They're training. And, and, and you've got a bit of a gap now because Easter's upon us. Um, so you've got a little bit of a break um, and then just literally straight back into training. Yeah, no, definitely. So we, we have, obviously, we're training today. It's our bye week. Um, obviously, Easter's coming up. Um, uh, John Dobson was kind enough and was like, listen, we'll give you guys off. Yeah. Um, so we obviously have a few days, but those few days, not like complete rest. We obviously still have to train at home yes. and keep fit and all sorts of things. Yeah, so once we go away, once we go away for holiday for this like four days, four to five days, once we back backfiring, yeah. we, there's no days off again. We'll probably have one day, um, day off in the week. And for the next three, four weeks, that's what's going to be happening. We just consistency and training every day. Technically, you actually have one 
one day in the week where you're off because you train and on Thursday we're off and then I have to come and see you on the radio exactly <laughs> so I'm also you're gonna working. come visit me that's your off day done <laughs> yeah no definitely so it's not like it's a it's a, an easy it's not like it's an easy um, a, a week yeah it's, it's not an easy week, week. no because I have to come on radio and I have to read the news you've got to read the sport the news yeah, you've got to do so my traffic <laughs> you've got to interact you've got to hang out there with me for an hour and it's like that's a tough time of the week Outside of rugby, are there other sports, local sports? Like I know, um, I mentioned the fact we've got local, a local soccer and cricket mad and rugby mad. Yeah. Were, were you ever a cricketer, a soccer player? Did you play any other sports yeah, outside of rugby? Yeah, I, I tried playing cricket at school. Were um, you a bowler, batsman? Uh, I was a bowler. Fast bowler? Actually, not so funny that they took me my linger because my technique was so funny. Like slinger, slinger, <laughs> yeah. slinger. They used to be like, is, are you throwing the ball or are you bowling? <laughs> and I was just like, nah, nah, I'm bowling. They were like, no, you're my linger. I didn't know who my linger was until it's like, you, yeah, yeah I actually sure. Google it. And yeah. I think but obviously now I don't do anything I just rugby is your life just rugby and, and, and yeah. I just watch boxing I watch a lot of yeah. boxing and I watch a lot of like UFC like combat sports you know? yes. I'm, a, I'm a big fan yeah, well, listen, this has been an incredible time spending with yeah. you, spent with you in, a, in the, behind the wheel of this car, finding out more, a little bit more, more about what makes you tick. And, uh, of course, it's always incredible to, to watch your career and see where you're going to. There's only bright stars ahead for you. Um, I, I look forward to having the next video with you uh, when you are uh, when you are wearing green and gold. That's no, next definitely. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm also looking forward to, to wearing the green and gold. You know, I always tell people, it might not be now, it might not be tomorrow, but eventually, like, it will come you know yeah. if if it, if i have to you know make sure that everyone doesn't make it to training <laughs> yeah and for me to be there yeah. then that's the case and that's the case yeah but um yeah i'm very i'm very honored for you guys to actually put me in a maserati i never thought i'll actually have ever been the maserati yeah. and like and i said it suits you so well i think this is something that we're going to see more of in your life yeah uh, and i see a bright future like everybody else does uh, and we're not just saying that uh, we really mean it you know i think i think we can honestly see where there's talent and where there isn't and i'm sure that everybody else in higher positions and more authoritative positions yeah. will have to has told you that before but really uh and you're such a nice guy you're such a lecker oak to hang around with i can see why I can see why, uh, why why your teammates you know have such a great vibe around you. Thanks yeah, for thank spending some time with us on these platforms, yeah. and look forward to like I said, chatting to you again in the near future. Yeah, no, definitely. Thank you very much. Thanks, mate. I'll see you on radio. Eh? <laughs>